Hey everybody, hope you're having a great day. We've got something that's kind of a mailbag, kind of a haul video. Uh, we're gonna start off with a traditional opening. Um, yeah, we're just gonna have some fun. Hopefully it's something that interests you. Uh, oh yeah, okay, that's right. This is, what the heck is that? This is a couple of router bits. Uh, they are Freud. It's really hard to find quality router bits at a decent cost. Freud is kind of one of the better options. This is a, uh, this is a flush bearing trim bit. And the idea with this is that you can basically use it to trace something. So, uh, I was working on a bus project where I had to cut some windows out that were kind of an odd shape. So this roller bearing will roll against the template that I was trying to cut out and the other part cuts. And this is one of those keyhole things, you know, like the little wooden keyholes on the back of wooden crafts and stuff like that. My wife makes some crafts. And so I wanted to have one of these little keyhole bits so that I could uh, put those things on the back of her crafts. Now this, I have no idea what this is. Uh, shank, resin and asphalt. All right, let's see. Quarter, okay, so it's gotta be router bits. Shank, plate, hips, resin, and asphalt. Interesting. Um, so I think if I remember correctly now, what I did was I bought some cheap ones to go along with the Freud bits. Uh, cheap router bits are a bit scary because, uh, a bit scary, uh, you know, the, the bearings tend to fly off and things bend and a router is a pretty dang dangerous tool. But, um, I decided to get some cheapy ones just to try. Uh, yeah, so there's different styles. This one, the bearing is on the bottom and the cutter's on the top. Then there's some that are the other way around with the cutter, uh, on the bottom and the bearing on the top. And then there might even be some that have both, uh, where there's a bearing on each side. Uh, yeah, this is a different height, so different thicknesses and stuff like that. Uh, so yeah, I think I bought these for probably less than 15 bucks. And I wouldn't be surprised if this one was 15 bucks by itself. Uh, so I kind of got a little assortment of these. I went through two of them. Uh, one thing to note when you buy these is that <clears throat> one of the applications for them is, uh, laminate countertops where you're just cutting you know, this tiny bit of laminate. So you want to be careful that you have one that's actually made for cutting wood, not just cutting that plastic laminate. I do have some more packages that are coming in the mail uh, by Tuesday, so I'll post this video after that. But in the meantime, we'll look at a couple of these other things. Uh, I've been kind of getting into some retro computing stuff, not necessarily for gaming, but I need to do some of it for work. Um, so anyway, So this is a new old stock network card, and I wanted this for a couple of reasons. This uh, 8139 chipset is very compatible with old versions of Windows and things like that. Um, it also has this ROM, which I've seen some people do some things uh, with some hardware modifications by adding an EEPROM into this ROM slot. So you basically can add functionality to your computer by putting a chip in here. Uh, don't have particular plans to use that, but I did want a network card that was going to be compatible with a whole bunch of different uh, operating systems. So that's why I specifically chose this 8139. This is the D. Uh, hopefully that doesn't come back and bite me in the butt. Speaking of network cards, we I did pick this up um, at a thrift store. I don't usually buy stuff at thrift stores, but I saw this and I was like, yeah, it was it was one of those ones that was a good cause. And, uh, so this is a, this is, uh, this is two. Oh, what is that? That is a fuzzy modem. Uh, that's interesting. I wasn't expecting a modem. And this is a, uh, a D-Link 130B. Uh, I'm guessing by the link speed thing, it's another 10100. And, uh, yeah, a modem. Let's see if we can figure out what this is. This is a it says 56 PRC, so I'm guessing it is a 5600 baud modem with a lot of dust in it. So, uh, three bucks for the pair. It's actually kind of a little expensive by my standards, but, um, I figured I'd add it to the collection because I didn't have any other PCI network cards. So that'll give me two of them to play with and, uh, try to see if I can get it working in all my different environments. This was kind of a joke. Uh, it, um, I don't think this was $2.99. I feel like it was even cheaper than this. But this is a 5600 baud modem. And this is a, this is an AOL 
activation kit type thing. So uh, let's take a look at this. Let's see what a modem looked like. I would guess this is mid 90s, probably a little bit late 90s, because I feel like 95, a lot of people would have had like 33.6 modems. So this would have been <clears throat> late-ish 90s, uh, still sealed. Let's see what you get. I would imagine you'd get a cable or something like that with something that calls itself a kit like this. So we get the Action Tech uh, version 1.0 CD-ROM, and we get a power brick, 9 volt AC, that's interesting. We have the 9 pin serial modem, and USB, that's interesting. Uh, yeah, there weren't a whole lot of these things that were external and USB, so that's kind of cool. And uh, it does come with the USB cable, so that's a little less interesting to me because I wanted one that had serial cable. Uh, but it does come with a USB-A cable and a phone cable. And, oh, what is this? That might be a serial cable. So I think I paid a buck for this. But yeah, that's a 9 to 9 serial cable. I mean, to me, it's worth it for the for that particular serial cable. Fantastic. That's funny that they thought to protect one side. I guess the side with the pins. Uh, so interesting. Yeah, that is a male to female nine pin serial cable. Very sweet. So for a buck, can't complain about that. Speaking of accessories, uh, I paid a dollar for this thing. Um, I do have one other external DVD drive. This is a DVD rewritable drive. Uh, yeah, so it's actually a DVD recording drive. So, um, I do have one of these things, but it is one where I've taken an old laptop drive and stuck it in an enclosure, and so it's a little janky. Uh, this is a little bit better. It doesn't need a second power cable, although there is uh, a place to put one. It can use the two USB ports, which is kind of sweet. Um, let's see if we can get it to fire up. I guess I've got my hub over here. Let's see what happens. Well, you just heard it pop up on the computer. And it looks like the drive is spinning. Uh, rendition. New lines. So yeah, I guess it's a movie. I have no idea. I've never heard of it. But anyway, it came with a movie called Rendition. And uh, yeah, seems to show up fine. Shows up as a drive, so that's pretty sweet. Uh, paid a buck. I moved the camera and you'll see why, because I paid 10 bucks for this, which uh, it does have some scratches down here. Okay, now I feel a little bit bad because I did ask for some money off of this thing because it had scratches on there and it turns out those aren't really scratches. Those are some kind of marks on there. It looks a lot dirtier on this reflection. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it around because uh, I don't know anything about this. Other than the fact that it is a 32 inch TV with everything I look for in an office monitor. Uh, I've got my RF, I've got VGA, I've got three HDMI, I've got component in, and I've got digital audio out and headphone out. So if this thing works, it makes a great monitor for something like my CNC machine or for fixing computers. Uh, looks like we've got a broken HDMI cable in here. Problem solved. Let's see if it works. HDMI 2, here we go. <laughs> and there you have it. Uh, it is pretty much perfect. I paid $10 for this thing. Now, I paid too much for this box. Uh, I paid $10. Um, it was at a yard sale where they gave me a whole bunch of other things that were like crazy good deals. So I went ahead and bought this. Um, this is... Well, there's several things in here. So... 
Um, we have a trailer four pin extension cable, which is probably not something I'll need, but even just to be able to cut these ends off and use them for something is kind of cool, kind of handy. Um, let's see what else I've got in here. We have there's a manual, some wire nuts, uh, a fuse, but we have a single 470 microfarad capacitor, <laughs> a single one from Radio Shack, new old stock. Uh, we have this thing, which I did play with this at the yard sale, and I don't think it works, so they basically gave it to me for free. Uh, just kind of beeps. I wonder if the batteries are low. But this is what was interesting to me. This is a Craftsman multimeter. And uh, the reason that I just thought was interesting enough to put it on the channel is... Uh, well, let me show you something real quick. I think one of the coolest things about the Kai Wheats meter is that these little things light up to tell you which uh, places that you need to put your probes. And I think that's really cool. And this is a high-tech solution. Well, the Craftsman people came up with this, which I think is really, really funny. I don't know if you saw that, but like, as you put this thing around the meter, ports cover over so that you know where to plug things in. So I just thought that was kind of cool, um, <laughs> the fact that it did that. In addition, it actually has a fair amount of features. It has uh, some capacitance checking, which the fact that it has five ranges is actually pretty important because every capacitance checker I have that is auto ranging just takes forever. And uh, so I think that's kind of cool. It also has this uh, 20 kilohertz frequency, which I don't know if that's a, if that's like a square wave generator or what that is. I guess we'll have to figure that out. Um, and then it's not auto ranging. It's just uh, a normal, normal meter. Does it have a light on it? Let's, let's turn it on. Is that a back? I can't tell if that's a backlight or a flashlight. Oh, no, it's a backlight. And if you look at it just right, you can kind of see there's a backlight on the screen. Uh, I'm sure these batteries are like ancient in this thing. Um, yeah, let's hook it up for a second. Let's go to DC volts. We'll go to two volts and plug her in here. And we'll go ahead and test those batteries that I just took out of storage. We're backwards, but that's fine. 1.6 volts, nice. And it does have little, uh, little caps or whatever to protect the, the edge of the probe. So you're only getting a little bit of the probe. Uh, let me try one other thing. So I bought this ridiculous 12 pack of C batteries at a thrift store for a dollar. And normally I wouldn't have thought twice about getting them. Uh, there was no way I'd buy something like that, except for the fact that when I looked up here, I saw that first of all, the copyright date is 2019. So they can't be too old. And then it says Duracell. So even though the brand is Procell, uh, the box says Duracell. So I thought, uh, I didn't have a meter with me, shame on me, but let's go ahead. Oh, they feel light. They feel like uh, Dollar Tree batteries. Uh, let's see, what do you think? All right, so go ahead before I put this on the meter. Are you thinking 1.3 volts, 1.4? You think we might get 1.6 out of them? Uh, expiration 2019. And 1.4, wah, wah. Uh, that is not good. Let's try another one. one point four four i wasted a dollar um maybe we can find something to do with these things one point four one that's kind of sad it, it clearly says one point five volts on here uh but anyway i wasted a dollar on these speaking of stupid purchases uh, i have this thing that i paid two dollars for and i have no idea why this is a wall and sack 3m solid state Ready for it? Ready for it? This thing opens somehow, somewhere. I know it opens, I've had it open. Tape recorder. I'll be honest, I have no idea what I was thinking when I bought this. I've been kind of watching some other retro channels and uh, seeing some things about Commodores and stuff like that that use tapes and I thought this was kind of interesting. Uh, so the fact that it was, I. I highly doubt that it's even going to 
uh, work. It does have this cool retro microphone that I thought maybe I could do something with. Uh, a little DIN connector on it. Uh, I thought that was kind of interesting for two bucks. I, I mean, I don't feel like I went totally wrong, but I'm going to bet that there are leaked batteries in this thing. Uh, I couldn't get this open at the garage sale, but uh, the same people who sold me that TV for two bucks, so I don't feel too bad if this thing does not work. While I've got the camera far up, I'm gonna show you another thing I probably wasted money on, but this is a snap-on punches and chisels uh, display. Uh, I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. It's kind of dumb, but it does have this, uh, does have some hardware with it. The whole thing was sealed when I got it, but I couldn't tell what it was. So I asked the people at the store if they would let me take a look at it and they kind of ripped the thing up. Um, but it does have the hardware to attach this melamine or whatever sign to it. And uh, yeah, it's got a whole bunch of holes in this other tray that I'm guessing just to stop things from pivoting. Uh, so I mean, I kind of thought it'd be funny to use it for spudgers and pins and stuff like that. I don't know. Um, it's Snap-on and it was three bucks and it was a donation and it does this. So uh, yeah, $3 Snap-on chisel holder. Speaking of $3, I bought this all-in-one touchscreen i3 PC and again I'm not gonna make you look at the weird reflections but uh, it has Ethernet four USB ports uh, speaker out SD card reader USB 3 mic and headphone jack and built-in Wi-Fi plus CD DVD on that side and again touchscreen uh, the reason why I got this is one it was three dollars um, and it actually worked it worked perfectly I swapped out the hard drive for an SSD and uh, I am probably going to use this on my laser and the reason being is that with a little pop-up keyboard uh, just be a lot easier to operate the laser I might even write a little software to make like a little interface for it uh, but three bucks don't really feel like I can go wrong with that a couple more things I know I've still got the camera up high but uh oh well you can see uh, I got this Radio Shack coated magnet wire and I had this exact pack as a kid, in fact, I probably still have some of it back over there on my rack. But um, if you guys haven't seen, the price of wire have gone through the roof. And so uh, anytime I see it cheap, I get it. And I paid, I think, a dollar for each of these, which, um, you know, that's just a bargain right now at the crazy wire prices. And, and to be honest, like hookup wire has always been really expensive. And this is 14 gauge, which is uh, kind of beefy. You know, it's not silicone or anything like that. but uh, handy for all of your low voltage applications. So I paid two dollars for the set of these and uh, Definitely thrilled to have that Next up we've got a real package This is a Fedeco uh, USB 3 docking station and I have been looking at these for a while I had a single drive one before and I have let me grab it here I have this doohickey and uh, this one it does take external power but uh, this is designed to do um, laptop IDE drives desktop IDE drives and SATA drives of all types and uh, it is good that this one has power every once in a while you'll see some of these that are more like a cable and uh, those only tend to work on the two and a half inch drives but these will work on most three and a half inch drives but what i have found is that some of the older ones uh this thing just doesn't give enough power to um so if if you missed out on this it will basically take any hard drive and turn it into a usb external drive uh, but this one has another trick up its sleeve so let me show you this is a dual hard drive dock so you have the ability to put two sata drives in it but it also has this button right here that you can clone two identical drives and i think this particular one works with either up to 12 or 16 terabyte drives and these things can clone a drive not even connected to the computer now that's not a feature i particularly need at the moment but it doesn't hurt to have it it's a usb 3 has 12 volt power input uh, on and off switch plus a couple of extra USB ports on the front. So, uh, you know, this thing every time I want to hook a drive up I you know 
go pull it out of the desk, I find power for it and all that kind of stuff and hook it up. Uh, this one will just kind of sit here on my desk like a little dock and you know, just kind of be available to pop a drive in whenever. Uh, just to complete the unboxing, you've got a decent size uh, three amp 12 volt power cord and a USB three cable. So uh, this thing wasn't too expensive, maybe 30, 35 bucks ish. I'll uh, have a link in the description as well as a link for all the Amazon stuff. This is something that I'm really sad I don't have an unboxing for. Uh, one of you guys sent me this and specifically said don't make a video on it and then kind of changed your mind or, or told me it was okay to make a video, but I had already unboxed everything. Uh, I almost recorded it just in case, but uh, one of you guys sent me a lot of fun 3D printed stuff, some cool circuit boards and stuff like that. But um, the thing I want to show you right now is this Raspberry Pi Pico. Now, I feel like I'm the last YouTuber on earth to get one of these things, um, but I am looking forward to playing with it, and I really do appreciate uh, the person who sent this in so that I can get started in the world of Raspberry Pi Picos. Next up, we got another Amazonian. This is another SSD enclosure. Now, I guess probably three or four months ago, I got one of these uh, M.2 SSD enclosures, and uh, I really liked it. Um, but the reason why I got this one is uh, two things. For one, for those of you guys who haven't seen the M.2 drives, they're crazy fast, they're about this big, and uh, they are the future of SSDs. Now the problem is that most motherboards, if they have support for them, might have one. Occasionally you'll find a motherboard with two or more, but uh, it's still pretty rare these days to be able to hook up more than one of them to your computer at once. So, uh, you know, when you're doing backing up and transferring and cloning, you need to have some way to plug a second one in. And I bought one of those already and I love it. But the idea with this one is uh, occasionally I may want to be able to clone from one to the other without taking, without involving my current computer. And what's really cool about this one is that it is toolless. Um, these things generally use really tiny screws and stuff like that. And so they're a little bit of a pain in the butt. Well, this one is made to be toolless and you just slide it in and get going. So I think that's kind of cool. Um, the screws are really, really annoying. Like when you put one of these things in a computer, if it uses a screw, uh, you definitely want a magnetic screwdriver because they're super tiny and you're just in awkward places. So this thing I think was about, this is not the cheapest one in the market, but I wanted one that was aluminum. I wanted one that had good reviews and I wanted one that was toolless. So I think I paid like 22 or $23 for it. And uh, speaking of that, this and this are both two of the things that I got from the affiliate money that I got from you guys using my links. Um, you know, I don't have a Patreon and all that kind of stuff. So one of the best ways you can support the channel is using the links in the description. And so these were two fun things that I got that are gonna be helpful to me thanks to you guys using the links. Next up, we got something from Lowe's. Normally I wouldn't sit here and show you something from Lowe's, but I thought it was kind of interesting and I wanna know what you guys think if you've ever used these or not. Um, these were on crazy clearance like some of them were uh, $1.49, $1.29, um, $1.62 per pack. But these are double-sided, most of them drill bits, and I or screw bits. I love the idea of these longer bits. I use these longer ones all the time for working on computers and stuff like that. You know, just use the drill, get way down there. Um, but what I thought was interesting is that these are double sided and it seems kind of strange to me. Let me grab this thing out here. It seems kind of strange to me that, you know, I would have assumed this thing grabbed onto this and that that was part of what holds the bit tight but you can't do that on here. Like it would have to, you know, it's grabbing onto this thing here and then maybe it bites a little bit of this. So, I mean, I, I have to think that these things would strip, which is why I saved the receipt. Um, but I mean, it feels like it holds pretty good in there. And then, you know, if you strip it out, then you just switch it and go to the other side. And then for those of you who don't know, these skinnier things on here are made to 
allow this thing to torque a little bit and handle the impact better. So I got a various selection of these. I got some square ones and Phillips ones and I had a gift card and I think, let me see, what did I pay? I bought some, I paid $15 for all of it, uh, including I think a couple other things, but I've got T25s and squares uh, or Robertsons as my Canadian friends call them, uh, Phillips two, you know, just a various assortment and I'm gonna put them through their paces and find out if these things are junk. But have any of you guys used these? Cause I was really curious, you know, how we're not you know how we're not having to bite on this part uh, you can see right there like even on the robertson there's a little tiny biting surface but nowhere near what you have on this and i don't know if that's important or not then last but not least nothing too exciting but i did pick this up at the flea market today this is a uh, an extreme 3d pro logitech usb um game controller as i've told you guys i'm working on a legacy not particularly for gaming, but you know, might throw some old uh, games. I used to love the game Comanche 3. Uh, I used to love playing um, that. I had the force feedback, the Microsoft Sidewinder force feedback joystick, and I used to love, I'm a big helicopter freak, and so uh, I loved playing that. And this is not the same, but it's pretty dang good. You know, this will this will this will get the job done for a little bit of fun. Um, so this is USB, it's not game port, which is a little unfortunate, but uh. Anyway, I picked this up for three bucks at the flea market today. So that is all the stuff I have. That is the mega mailbag, flea market bag, Lowe's bag, Amazon bag. Um, I do appreciate you watching. Thanks for using the links in the description. And uh, hey, have a great day.